every few months on this channel, we usually step back and try to get a bird's eye view of the state of the nation of Kenya. Those videos on this channel are no doubt the most revealing and we usually get a lot of game-changing revelations and insights whenever we do this. And actually, this should not be surprising. Allow me a brief illustration. You are driving along the Nairobi-Mombasa Highway and you are headed to Mombasa for a brief holiday with your loved ones, your family. You are not young and reckless. You're a careful person. You know that this is the most dangerous highway in Kenya. Indeed, a local newspaper a few days ago put it this way. Death is always lurking. Yeah, it's around, very close. Whenever you're on the Nairobi-Mombasa Highway. Anyway, you're very keen to get to Mombasa before dark. Yeah, because driving in the dark on this particular dangerous highway <laughs> can never be a good idea. And you pass a town called Mangu. Yeah, not very far from another place called Samburu. Not very far from Mombasa. This is the stretch after Voi, Voi town. And your emotions take over. You get very annoyed. Because in front of you are several trailers and they've come to a stop. You hate trailers. Yeah, most trailer drivers drive very recklessly and dangerously on this road. They are a nightmare to overtake. Yeah, especially on stretches of the road where there are also potholes. And so you start insulting these truck drivers in your native language. And you say all kinds of things about their mothers. Yeah, not very nice things. In your tribal dialect. Tena in front of your family. The children in the car. Now please continue to humor me because you are about to move to a section of my illustration. Yeah, that is very unlikely. And it is only unlikely because most people don't carry drones inside their vehicles. Although these things are widely available these days, a few years ago in a country outside Kenya, I purchased yeah, a drone very cheap about fifty dollars for my son as a christmas present and this drone had a camera that you could use a smartphone to easily access and see what the drone is seeing even when it's high above the ground anyway so you happen to have a drone in your vehicle and you release it it flies into the air you want to know the trailer that is a culprit causing all this big traffic jam, delaying you. And when the drone gets to about 300 meters away from where you're stuck, you're suddenly able to see what the problem is. And it has absolutely nothing to do with trailers or trailer drivers. There is a horrific road accident involving Two small vehicles and one of the vehicles had several young people in it you can see that from the drone you can even see the bottle of whiskey yeah, that has fallen on the road after the impact which tells you that the young people in this other vehicle must have been drinking Maybe even the driver was drinking. And it is highly likely that they may have thought they were still playing that very popular game, PlayStation game, Grand Theft Auto, which is very realistic. 
And it is very likely that they thought they were still playing the game. And yet this was reality. You don't drive on the road the way you drive in that game. Never ever. But in my opinion, too many Kenyans these days on the road drive in a manner that reminds me of this game. Which tells me that they may have a huge problem yeah, making a distinction between reality and video games. True story. And many of you who have driven down this highway will agree with me very quickly. Anyway, my point is, from a bird's eye view, that drone up there, which can see where your vehicle is stuck and can also see where the problem is. Yeah. And very important, can see the stretch of road beyond this accident. Yeah, it's clear. Not the main highway, of course, but there's a side road yeah, close to where your vehicle is stuck. All you need to do is take a left turn out of the highway. Take a dirt road for a few meters and you'll be clear on the other side, able to continue the journey. In other words, the drone helps you to see where you have not reached and to know which path to take yeah, to save yourself a lot of trouble. That, my friend, is the very important purpose of stepping back, taking a bird's eye view of where we have come from politically and where we're going we're able to see that side road yeah, and that's my main objective here today so without wasting any more time let's send that drone up there to take a look yeah, so that we can see on our smartphones yeah, the real-time pictures being sent back and we'll be able to get a very clear picture of where we are and why we are where we are today in Kenyan politics. Everybody is talking about how reggae, the BBI, was so dramatically stopped, brought to a screeching halt yeah, by the judiciary, the courts in Kenya. And many people are saying the courts have saved our constitution. They have defended our constitution very gallantly from some very powerful people yeah, who were abusing our constitution. Indeed, our gallant courts declared the BBI unconstitutional. Now, I'm going to be very honest with you. I don't have any legal training. I am not a lawyer. The only thing I can say is that because of my profession and my experience in that profession, I have seen how the law works, not theory, practical. I understand many things about the law and our new 2010 constitution than most. Yeah, especially because I know the history behind it. For example, and many Kenyans don't know this, there was a very deliberate effort to simplify our constitution so that anybody with a limited legal background can read it and completely understand it and what it says, including the spirit of our constitution. Now, with that kind of background, yeah, I'll tell you very honestly, I still don't see, up to this very minute, I still don't see how the BBI was unconstitutional. I don't see how millions of Kenyans, let's leave out yeah, the small percentage of people, where it is claimed that chiefs were forcing people yeah, to sign for the BBI. I'm on the ground regularly, and I can tell you for a fact, millions of people signed yeah, for the BBI without being persuaded 
or harassed or intimidated here in the country called Kenya. How is that unconstitutional? County assemblies right across the country gave the BBI a green light. How can that be unconstitutional? For Kenyans who are not ruled by emotion, this thing is a total deep mystery. But it won't be by the end of my show today. And that drone up there, giving us a bird's eye view of the situation, political situation in Kenya, will be a great help. Now let's start very quickly by looking at the major players in this BBI movie. Or shall we call it the reggae movie? Right Honorable Raila Amolo Dinga, President Uhuru Kenyatta, Deputy President William Samoy Ruto. Have I left out anybody? Those are the three major political players in this BBI reggae movie. But actually, there's a third player. An institution, the judiciary. Now, let's go back to 2017. You know, when you want to solve a mystery, maybe a crime has been committed, you have to trace back the movements of the major players or major suspects, if you like. In 2017, Raila Odinga was in NASA. He was a presidential candidate. Many Kenyans know Raila Odinga won the 2017 presidential elections. But you know what happened? The other side, which at that time consisted of President Huru Kenyatta and Deputy President William Samuel Ruto, yeah, did something we call on this channel a pop, 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 duly elected. They rigged, massively rigged that presidential election. But the fourth major starring actor in this movie, the judiciary, stopped them. Yeah, when the Supreme Court, with Chief Justice David Maraga, annulled, nullified the election of Uhuru and Ruto yeah, into the presidency. Raila Odinga and his massive support base, the people who voted for him, were over the moon. Kenyans celebrated for days. And the celebrations showed us something very clearly. Because we compared those celebrations, yeah, when the election of President Uhuru Kenyatta was annulled, with the celebrations of when President Uhuru Kenyatta and Deputy President William Samoy Ruto allegedly won the elections. It was very clear that only a minority of Kenyans were celebrating, showing you very clearly that only a minority of Kenyans voted for Jubilee yeah, in 2017. But after David Maraga's landmark ruling, on 1st September 2017, the celebrations that followed clearly told you that the vast majority of Kenyans yeah, had voted for Raila Odinga. Those celebrations clearly showed any keen observer that Raila Odinga must have won by a landslide, not a slim victory, a landslide. And what happened after that is that the executive, the presidency, and the judiciary started a war. It is worth noting that Deputy President William Samuel Ruto, who was part and parcel of the presidency, was one of the major coordinators and the person giving the instructions yeah, on the rigging of the elections. I don't have time now to give you the many examples proving this. But let me just remind you. Do you remember where voting started 
even before Kenyans went to the polls? Whose computer handle started the voting? Someone in Karen. Go back and do some research if you don't know. Alafuji Jazie. May I also remind you, or oh, for the sake of visitors to Kenya, people are not familiar with the Kenyan situation, let me just remind you. This is the same Deputy President William Samoy Ruto, the very same person, who is now a champion of protecting our constitution. This is the man who poured billions into stopping reggae. You see, the court process in Kenya ain't cheap, so let's not be naive. Trust me, you will faint when you discover what the cost was of protecting our constitution. And the person who footed most of that bill is Deputy President William Samoy Ruto. If you're naive, if you're not interested in human nature, yeah, you may want to believe that the man has changed from what he was and what he did in 2017 to now a savior of the people of Kenya, a man of the people, the leader of the hustlers in Kenya. <laughs> anyway, of interest is what Uhuru and Ruto did after the Maraga ruling by the judiciary. That is apart from declaring total war against the judiciary. Because, let's be honest, the only obstacle stopping them yeah, from ensuring that their rigging stood was the judiciary. I can hear somebody saying the IEBC and I'd kindly politely ask them to shut up because the IEBC was in the pocket of the Jubilee Party. So, what did Huru and Ruto do next? I will remind you, they intimidated the Supreme Court judges. In one particular memorable incident, the official vehicle of Deputy Chief Justice Philomena Muilu was sprayed with gunshots. The result of this bizarre incident is that for days the Deputy Chief Justice could not dare leave her house and therefore she failed to attend crucial Supreme Court deliberations that would have a major impact on what was going to happen next. By the time the repeat election, I won't even call it drama, the repeat election comedy had ended and the case was once again before the Supreme Court judges. All the judges had been reduced to kuku ambaye zimenyeshewa usiku mzima. And so they declared the election of Uhuru Kenyatta and William Samoy Ruto legal and constitutional. And the pair were sworn in. And this was followed by the mock swearing in of the people's president, the man who had rightfully won those 2017 presidential elections, Raila Amolo Odinga. Now, let's come back to the present. This battle between the judiciary and the executive has been gathering momentum since 2017. But very important to note, there is one character that has crossed over from the side of the executive to the side of the judiciary. And that, of course, is William Ruto. His Excellency. So, to simplify it, can we put it as follows? The judiciary was going about its business, playing its role, which it has been empowered to play by our 2010 constitution, when all hell broke loose and the rules of the game suddenly changed. 
the judiciary became a political player in this game of politics. And there's plenty of evidence, solid evidence, to support this. For example, it became very easy for anybody who is against the government to obtain something called a court order. Court orders against government actions started flying out of the judiciary like popcorn from a very busy popcorn machine. <laughs> you will agree with me, yeah, if you have no emotions, yeah, or no side, which you want to back at all costs, yeah, you even want to stop your brain working just to support this other side. If you're neutral, if you leave your emotions out of this, you will quickly agree with me that if it is the same government of 2017, the same Huru Ruto partnership of 2017, that was at play supporting the BBI in 2021, things would have happened. The same intimidation tactics would have been used so that by the time this thing came before the courts, all the judges would have been operating like the Supreme Court judges in late 2017. All of them would have been very similar to chickens that have been rained on the whole night. And you will agree with me that something has definitely changed on the government side. There is more respect for the judiciary from the government side. And the judiciary has taken full advantage of this to properly deal with the executive. And of course we are all keenly aware that there is a player, a star player, on the executive side who is missing from the executive side. This particular star player has switched sides yeah, to the judiciary. What I mean is that he is fully backing the judiciary. Yeah and is fully backing the very same constitution that he traveled all over the country, opposing, shooting down. You'll remember Ruto was the leader of the No campaign in the referendum that led up to the passing of the 2010 constitution. Please don't have short memories. It is dangerous in politics. Even if you have a short memory, Please take some time to do some research before you take positions that will not only harm you, but will harm your children, your grandchildren, and your great-grandchildren long after you're gone with your naive, shallow thinking and way of doing things. Now, if we were to look into the future, we can also clearly see something else, and that is, in case there is a petition against the election of the president in 2022, the side that has William Samuel Ruto will be much more confident in filing a petition than the side that does not have. William Samuel Ruto. That should be very clear. In the same way D.P. Ruto and his allies were able to successfully prove before the judiciary that the BBI was unconstitutional, I believe it will also be very easy for them to prove that whoever is elected in 2022 into the presidency, if it is not them, if it is not that side, they'll be able to easily prove that that election was unconstitutional. I mean, if they're able to prove so easily that something supported by a vast majority of Kenyan signatures was unconstitutional, why should it be so difficult to prove that a candidate who is elected by the vast majority of Kenyans was elected unconstitutionally? In my view, that should be even easier to prove. Let's be honest, folks. If they stopped reggae, they've shown us that they're capable of stopping 
anything. I think we can pilot our drone, which is still up there. We can pilot it back down. We have seen enough. It should all be crystal clear to all of us by now. Now, a special gambling offer is coming to an end strictly within the next 48 hours. So please rush and take advantage of the WAB offer of 1982. Yeah, just send a blank email to the email address you see on your screens right now. And you'll get an instant automated response. And if you're lucky, you'll be able to get our old offer, 1982, and enjoy the WABs, including one that I'm working on right now. Actually, three that I'm working on right now. Yeah. And you will never have to pay subscription again. I highly recommend that you rush for it immediately. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha.